Oh, hi. Welcome to Aggressive Mastery. I'm Micah. We're going to go ahead and walk through some internal documentation about how in Unreal Engine to expose a C++ class. And then also, what class are we going to expose? Well, I need to read and write strings out to a file at runtime. So let's figure that out. And there's a couple of gotchas. So that's why I'm putting together this little to-do on how to do this. Sorry about the volume. Sorry about the quality. I just don't have any more time to make it any better. I did try, though. We're using this little video camera from a while ago. And the microphone's in it. And some noise gate stuff. I should get rid of that. But here we go. Let's make it in under 10 minutes. All right, so what are we going to do? Well, we're going to hide that. Here we're going to do. We would like to make a blueprint callable or node, a blueprint node, that will read a text file that's on our hard drive during our runtime and also write to it and maybe create new ones. Why not? Yes, we can. We also don't know or don't want to really read any more C++ or write it. So we want to try and do as little as possible, which is perfect. That's exactly what this is for. All right, so let me see, make sure I know what we're looking at with the whole screen. So in my project, any blueprint, we're going to add these nodes here. Nodes, we will add a save string to file which will allow you to tell it where the file is from this first string and tell you what data to put in that file from the second string. And you can do this on begin play or on tick or on event. Let's put it over here. And then this other one here, load file from string, which will take a file name, which will be the output of this first, or you can put a file name in it again from here and give you the string out as a variable. If we do that right now, it will create this data.txt file, put in, this is a new file, and then it will also print that out from this function. And then after that, we'll go ahead and read that file and print out that string. So what we'll see is, uh, this is a, is a new text file, will be printed out here, as that's the value of the file when we read that out. And then the file location, which is this output, will be what's printed out first. So we're going to get the file location, then it will read that file and give us what's in there. And you'll see that right here up in the corner. <laughs> no, you won't. It's a 4K screen. It says it right there. This is really quick. But if I hit escape, I go down here to the output log, scroll down to the bottom. Here, we'll highlight a couple of them. And I'll just let you make believe that you can read that. All right. So what you're seeing here, we're going to walk through a my to do rather than anything else. And here it is in big, hopefully, resolution. Steps to add a new C++ class. And using that class, we'll add new functions. I'm adding extra words here. To turn a string to a file and turn a file into a string in a blueprint. This is the first revision of it. One note with this is that this will enable you to very easily use some of the other functions of the file helper class, which are the two functions we're going to expose from that file helper class in C++ is read and write to a file with a string. There's other functions there. And if you want to look at those right above here, this tells you how to do so. So I'll maybe reference it down below again. But you could click on the file helper in Visual Basic go to the definition and it will pop open a new class where you can look and see load file from to string is what we're going to use to call here or rather save file to string is what's in the picture you can find save file to string in this folder and you can just sort of see how we just copied those pieces to basically say hey go use this C++ of C++ this piece of C++ when we ask you to from blueprints that's what we're that's what we're doing all right i'm going to need to use this scroll over here all right, so the first thing you're going to want to do is go up to the file in Unreal Editor. Go down to New C++ Class. You're then going to scroll down in that pop-up window 
to Blueprint Function Library. And note, I'm using Unreal Engine 4.26, and I use Visual Studios 2017, I believe it is. You'll need both those things to do this. But you won't need a full source compile of the, of the editor. Um, so that's good. So once you collect, select uh, the Blueprint Function Library, go ahead and hit Next. Got my Christmas lights still up on the screen. The catch here is in the next. The default name for the C++ class will be My Blueprint Function Library. That's very broad. You should rename it as something that makes sense to you. Specifically because it's going to create names and, for classes and function calls that also are called Blueprint Function Library. So if you have My Blueprint Function Library as your class name, it gets confusing because it's going to be in there a bunch of different spots. So rename it. That's what I did. And you can follow where I renamed mine to see where you should rename yours by your project and by your class. You can see here that road list and then the date is what this additional number is back here is my project. And that the name I'm going to give this library is going to change right down below. And it shows you where this, the, the classes are. Or the, code is. So I changed my name to agm external read write function. I changed it right here and I made it public. And so that's going to make it less vague when we're looking at the code here in a moment. Go ahead and hit create class. Ooh, sorry about all that. <laughs> there must be some like auto scroll on the next page turned on here. But I don't even have pages shown. So click Create Class. Here's what the two standard, uh, the H file is going to look like. Nothing in it. There's not even includes or anything above that. It's the whole file. Here's the CPP file. Everything in it. What you're going to see is that where it says Roadless in my version, that's my project. Where you see it saying, uh, the, in the, well, let's look over them both. We'll look over the first one. There's nothing in the CPP. So we can ignore that for now. Let's go look at the second one. Uh, the dot H. What the hell? Yes. I need to change that here. No, I'm not redoing the video for this. Ooh. Save. Don't need dare. Need dirt. There you go. Alright, so there's a default dot CPP. There's a default dot H. Inside of here in the dot H. You have uh, the core. Let's should be these that should be included by default. Kismic should be included by default, and the generator should be included by default. You shouldn't have to add any of those. Same thing with this whole stuff that's generated down here. That should be included by default. These are the default by H and dot uh, and dot CPP. You notice that there's a weird name here. U, Agam external rewrite. That's something they named. That U they added. U blueprint function library. If this was, yeah, good thing we renamed it so we wouldn't be thinking that this here was also our project name or something. All right, I define some of that here. Class roadless, public blah blah. Roadless is my project name. It's an API added by Unreal. That's why the API is at the end of it. Uh, UAG intro blah blah. <clears throat> is the function library the U is added by Unreal. I don't know why it's, where it's required, so that's added there. So it would change per yours. Public is making it a public function. Uh, so just me complaining again about if you had the had not changed the name, it would look weird here. Here's the update.h file. Uh, we included the runtime uh, library or header file for the file helper. This is what the letters read and write. Put some details in there about what we're doing. I went down here and I added these six lines, which are a description of this is a function allowing for the reading of physical text files through a single string in game at runtime. It's a U function blueprint callable category of IO. This will make it so when we type IO in, in blueprints, it pops up there as, a, as part of that category. And it's going to take a, a have a static callable name 
a load file to string that passes in a f string, which will be this stuff. They have another one here, another U function we call blueprint callable, same category. And it's going to also have a name you can use the callable function as, which is save string to file. It passes in that string file. Boom, that's it. That's, that's it. That's all of it. You want to make sure that the class is the right thing. Uh, this U, whatever, is your function library with a U in front of it. And uh, then if we look down here, I highlight this some more. I realize the U in front of the library name. This is called this is a called define or in the call definition. Again, confusing if your library is using the default name of my function call, blueprint call library. So good thing we changed it. Load file to string. This is the function call name. It's defined in the .h file. So we already did that earlier. Here is my CPP file. So this is the .h where we had a load file to string we defined and save file or save string to file we defined. And here's the CPP. We do come in here. Let's have some stuff to define what's going on. Use added to this this definition. Uh, the call the the eight CPP file down here. So now it's f string u ag whatever else. So this is telling us where we're pointing to. Load file to string. That's what we defined it earlier as in the h file. We're taking an f. We're defining that we're going to take a variable directory as a string and look in the our function of fpass for the game source directory. That's going to be your project directory source. And we're going to have a result string we call result. We're going to go ahead and get a hold of the platform of the file manager and go ahead and see if we have to create a directory or if the directory is already there. Either way we're going to either create the directory or we're going to access the file that's there in that directory. Um, this is also, I slashed out where you could then maybe check and just see if the directory is there. And if it's not, don't create it and don't create the file. But that's some stuff you need to look into. This way, it's going to always create the file in the directory. Or whatever you tell it to, basically. Sub the source folder. Oh, and then below it is the. Uh, stuff for saving a string to the file. We'll do the same thing. Look for the directory. Tell it what to do. If you wanted to add more things in here from the file manager, you could click on this is where we'll go back to what's at the very top here. You can click on that F file manager helper, go to definition and look through all the different calls in there. You see here it says load file to string. Now you see where down here in the code we call file helper, load file to string, or save file to string. So you can just add other things in there by copying this basically and changing the calls, making more calls. Here's two calls. These are your templates. Save all in Visual Studio and hit the build in Visual Studio. So build, build solution. And hope oh, it just goes through. It works. If it doesn't, start hunting down the errors. <laughs> Success looks like this. One succeeded, one skipped, because I think it was already built. Um, but we, I did this all just before this. So Now, save again in Visual Studio. Exit out of Visual Studio, so it's gone. Go into the editor, uh, Unreal Editor. Hit the Build Compile box. And hopefully it goes ahead and shows you this. No issues. Right on through. So what you're looking to actually see is that you see now it says there's some libraries added. Although really... Just looking for it to be cool because we have it in our source folder. Now, save all in Unreal, exit Unreal. Heck, maybe do a compile and a save all a few times. Just because, I mean, there's no errors, why not? Huh? I do. It felt great. Ah, that's nice. Close. Don't try and exit the blueprint and make it work right now. All right. Reload the editor. Now open up your blueprint. And then type in I.O. and looking for a new node. Hopefully these two things pop up. And here are your two functions when you drag them into the blueprint. Taking in a file name, which is your full directory into the file. So like uh, it'll be underneath your source directory since that's what we added in the code. Right. 
right here, in source directory, that's where our directory is. So if you wanted to change this to something else, you could, or just get rid of it. But that's going to fill in all your C colon blah 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 all the way out to your game directory. So if you need to look into that stuff, look there. Performance-wise, use disk I/O is the slowest thing you got. Try to do it as least amount possible. So if you have a text file and you want to append something to that text file or you want to change something in there you're going to have to read that whole thing into you know read file into a string here and then parse that out figure out what you want to change and then poop it back out to the file now if you do that every frame it's going to be slow it's going to it's, it's, it's the slowest thing you can do so what you want to do is do as much as you can in engine and only write it out to disk when you absolutely need to so like if uh, if you're saving a database Run the database in memory. You have a set save point where you push out those those uh, the database or deltas of what's changed in the database is your best idea. And to do that in a separate thread would be an even better idea. But uh, these are all advanced topics you got to figure out. I'm, and when I get there, I'll put a little video out like this on them. Um, okay, so save a string to file. So you this here data.txt. It would look in my game source directory for game.txt. Uh, it, if it wasn't there, it would create this and put that, that text into the file, is what this does. And it puts out to the output here is that direct file name. Then you load that string. I'm going to go ahead and just take that file name and spit out the values into a print string. That should look like this. First thing said, hey, it's data.txt. Second thing said, hey, here's what's inside that file. Create a file directory. So this is where mine is. Uh, well, this is where yours will be. Your Unreal Direct projects is for you. Mine is called uh, IAM projects. And source that text should be there, or data text. Man, I am. There you go. This is what's in there. And, and here's some detail on where your function library goes. And I just say, click on it in the editor to edit the CPP and H files rather than go edit them directly, so you don't get missed, you don't get lost, especially if you don't hang out and see a lot. Some more details on where those files are, and the full code all all breeze through here as well. And pause in every page, so to speak, just so you get a clearer view. But this is for my project, my library, my names. Things like AGM, you should know is, should be your project, or uh, things like Roadless, you should know should be your project name instead. If you copy mine over there, your project's not the same project name as mine, uh, you're not using the same library name as mine, then you're going to have uh, problems. You're going to have to hunt them down. And if you hunt them down, you can make it work. All right, there's the end of the CPP file. And go ahead and pause this thing where you need to read and type. I think probably the, the pictures from earlier are better. All right, there we go. I bet you this is a little over 10 minutes. But thanks for hanging out with me. And uh, I'll just show you it working again here. If we hit simulate and play, this doesn't show it, but oh well. If we hit simulate, we we'll play here. This is a new file, data text. Alright guys, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.